Hello everybody, this is a Metro Ethernet talk. My name is Vasily Mukin. I'm a solution architect over Juniper Networks. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to build a MEF compliant e-access services by using a Juniper Networks platforms, specifically ACX and MX series routers. E-access is referenced as an Ethernet virtual connection or operator virtual connection between two interfaces of the Metro Ethernet switches known as UNI and ENNI. Usually UNI interfaces where a customer CPE or NEED device is connected, ENNI in its turn provides connectivity to another provider's metro area network or, depending on a use case, another cloud service provider's gateway. One of the purpose of the today talk is to demonstrate which features and attributes within a Juno's operating system corresponds to the five MEF attributes listed in the below diagram. We will see how to make physical port on Juno's device looks like a UNI and or ENNI port, how to enable EVC multiplexing, customer VLAN and customer cost marking preservation end-to-end. -end. For the sake of simplicity, we'll use a single customer VLAN map to EVC, which corresponds to CVLAN bundling attribute set to NO. We will also see how Ethernet frames can be classified and delivered across the network with a class of service priority, which corresponds to cost label assigned to OVC by a service level agreement. If you are interested in more details about how MEF cost labels and colors are actually mapped to Juno's attributes, look into our next Metro Ethernet session. We have a simple lab setup which helps us in today's demo. Two nodes, ACX 5K and a MAX router, play roles of the Metro Ethernet switches and host UNI and ENNI ports respectively. Nodes are interconnected via an MPLS fabric. UNI and ENNI in its turn connected to ports of the traffic generator, so within the course of the session we'll be able to verify not only a control plane of the connection, but also send some traffic and make sure that Ethernet frames are received at both ends with appropriate values of VLAN tags and PCP bits. As I mentioned before, metro routers or switches, if you want, are interconnected via an MPLS fabric. For the sake of time, core facing interfaces are pre-staged with configurations for IGP and MPLS protocols, and we don't need to touch it within the course of the session. In MPLS world, a transport MPLS layer is very well decoupled from the service layer and is agnostic to any service attribute we are going to configure. So I believe it is a fair approach for our quick talk. We have all necessary class of service profiles like classifiers and rewrite rules pre-configured but not yet assigned to the service endpoints. Only core interfaces are configured with appropriate class of service. Within the course of the session, we need to configure OVC endpoints hosted at UNI and ENI firstly. Secondly, we need to enable connectivity and control plane between endpoints by establishing a Martini pseudo wire. And finally, we need to set an appropriate classification and mapping of ingress customer frames to forwarding classes or to course labels if we speak in terms of defined by MEF. So let's start with configuration of the OVC endpoints. Interfaces at both sides are assigned with the same logical unit number 555. For the sake of convenience, same numbers will be used for virtual socket ID. In general case, they can be of course different. Encapsulation type flexible Ethernet services is something that can be associated with a MEF EVC multiplexing attribute. Flexible VLAN tagging enables VLAN stacking on interface allows dot one q or q in q encapsulation. At the UNI side, any frame with customer VLAN ID 120 will be accepted on port and sent into virtual socket. ENNI side, on contrary, is agnostic to any customer VLANs. As you can see, it is configured with outer VLAN tag 555 only. Provider bridge ether type is used at the ENNI side in agreement with MAF spec. Any frame with the ether type and VLAN ID 555 will be accepted and sent into virtual socket. Actually, before sending the frame to OVC, I instructed the MAX to pop the outer tag and respectively to push it back for any frames received from the OVC. This is something that input-output VLAN map is responsible for in Junos. 
The configuration of the Martini socket at the uni site is very straightforward and requires minimum efforts. We need to let the switch know the loopback address of the remote node, what local endpoint virtual socket is attached to, and the unique identifier of the virtual socket. Uniqueness of this ID should be supported network-wide. At the ENNI side, a bit more settings is required to successfully establish connectivity. A pop-push operation with outer stack at the ENNI affects Juno's router's decision about type of the default encapsulation used for the virtual socket and we need explicitly set it to the Ethernet VLAN to make it consistent with default encapsulation chosen at the Unisite. For the same reason, we need to add statement which disables VLAN ID validation at EN9. After committing configuration at both ends, we should be able to see our OVC up and running. As soon as control plane is up and running, let's validate its data plane. I have traffic streams pre-configured at my traffic generator. Each stream consists of 8 flows, 4 flows per direction. Each flow is assigned with a dedicated PCP bit used in the C tag at uni and in S tag at the ENNI. Now let's start the flows and capture traffic at both sides. The first thing to mention about the packets captured at uni, uni side is that we have no losses. We received all 500 frames sent from the ENNI. Looking inside, we see frames with four different priorities are present. CTAG received in all frames as expected, and everything looks ok. At the ENNI side, we again have no losses. We have all frames encapsulated with provider bridge outer tag 555 and inner tag corresponds to original customer tag. Priority bits of the S tag stay in agreement with PCP bit of the C tag. The only thing which makes me worry about is DI or discard eligibility bit which is set to zero for the frame with priority 2. Frames with this priority should be qualified as yellow frames and respective value of the DI bit should be set to 1. That makes the service compliant with MEF spec. Probably the reason for this misbehavior is the fact that cost profile was assigned neither to UNI nor to ENNI side. In the next Metri Ethernet talk, we'll continue to investigate the cost part of the setup and complete class of service configuration at both ends appropriately. So thank you for being with us and looking forward to meet you at the next Metri Ethernet session.